Today on the Topic Show, Biden Harris quote unquote forgives $167 billion in student loans. The Save Act election integrity by Speaker Johnson goes viral. A picture of Biden's speech team also goes viral, while Ben and Jerry's progress commercial sparks controversy. Ford pushes their managers to only lease EVs. The Toyota 86 is outselling the Subaru BRZ 5 to 1. And Trader Joe's has a candle recall. All of that and much, much more on the Topping Show. Thank you everyone for taking the time to tune in today. Today's episode of The Topping Show is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. I say he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me, you see, that's a joke. If you're an IT leader or business owner, you can reach out to the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, give away a free 50 caliber musket or flintlock pistol with every IT purchase in July. Go to toppingtechnologies.com to learn more. Lastly, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button and tell your friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Now going over to the business part of the podcast, you have Ford only allowing their managers to now lease EVs, which is a cruel and unusual punishment, some might argue. Now this is brought to us thanks to good old Reuters. Yeah, a little, well, it's not a pretty picture, but it is a picture nevertheless of the Ford F-150 Lightning. And specifically it's by Nora Eckert, and she says, quote, Ford urges its managers to buy more EVs while leasing new ones under their new policy. Which, yeah, new policy is, I would, I would argue, it's more of a punishment. Now they say, quote, Ford Motors is trying to get more of its managers to buy electric vehicles. According to an internal email the automakers sent a few weeks ago, reviewed by Reuters, the Dearborn, Michigan-based company changed a leasing program to offer eligible and current former managers, now requiring them to order you know, the electric Mustang Mach-E SUV, which, uh, or the F-150 Lightning pickup if they wish to lease a supplemental vehicle. Workers are allowed to set a number of leased vehicles, typically one or two, depending on their management level, before ordering a supplemental car. This is the first time Ford's restrict employees to buying EVs for the supplemental lease program, a company spokesman said. Which, I was going to say, and, and it, allegedly, I, I read this article, this is not to punish the employees. That was not the actual intent. I thought... This might be an instance where if a manager is performing poorly or if they're showing up late to work every day, instead of getting something fun like a real Mustang with a stick shift and a V8 like they should all have by default, or a good old Ford F-150 pickup truck with a you know gas engine, they'd force them to use these. But this actually is for all employees. It's not a punishment program. Now, their spokesman says, quote, by encouraging our employees to drive electric vehicle through the optional program, they can learn firsthand how easy it is to better share their experience with friends and family. A key way to increase familiarity with new technology, unquote. Which, I mean, I'm not saying your family would banish you at the Christmas table or the Thanksgiving table if you were just bombastically talking about how awesome your F-150 Lightning or Mustang e EV is. But I'm not saying your family would necessarily punish you for the rest of your life or not invite you, like, every year after that. But they might just not pass the, I don't know what people eat these days, yams or potatoes when you ask for them. They might just start to ignore you because, yeah, I... And I, I know two or three people who have EVs, and I don't know, maybe it's kind of like veganism. They can't help but tell you every time you meet them for a minute or two. But nevertheless, this is also, I don't think it's a coincidence, this is also with their sales not doing as best as they projected. Now, CEO uh, Jim Farley actually noted that they first expected to pump out about 150,000 vehicles for their EV. And it looks like last year they sold 24,000 F-150 Lightnings and 41,000 of the Mach-E's. So, not doing so great. Their, you know, hybrid sales are increasing exponentially. That's actually increased 25.3% year over year. Granted, that's like most automotive manufacturers, that's the biggest trend. But some sad news. And granted, this is an optional thing. You're not forced to lease from the company. But usually, traditionally, it's one of the, one of the nice perks of working there. I mean, I have family who worked for the big three, you know, back in Michigan. And most automotive companies have those programs where they'll lease it to you for, not at a law. Uh, oh, I'm going to debate a loss, but... A very, 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 very aggressive price point. Because, again, it's a nice perk for working at the company. You do tell your family and friends about it. Great way to build, you know, that local word of mouth. But you're forcing them so that it's now only the EVs. It's, again, it almost sounds like a cruel and unusual punishment. Because now you can only, yeah, and I can't help but wonder, they probably not tell us that, but in terms of the take rate of how many employees are choosing the EVs versus, you know, the gas engine platforms for the lease program, 
I would, again, this is just 100% speculation. I can't help but think it'd probably be 98 or 99% of people wanting to lease the you know, reliable, you know, durable ones. But let me know in the comments. Do you think this is cruel and unusual punishment for, you know, Ford executives or Ford managers? Now, if they want to lease a vehicle through the company, they're going to have to, again, use the, the Mustang e mock which, again, is a bastardized... It, it's nothing to do with the real Mustang that you and I know and love, the stick shift, you know, three pedals and a V8. It's the, uh, the electric SUV. Or the F-150 Lightning, which, yeah. Let me know in the comments. As always, it'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Other interesting business news, the Toyota 86 is outselling the Super BRZ 5 to 1, which is astronomical to say the least, especially considering it's the same darn car, but slightly different pieces of plastic where the little hood ornament goes. Now, this is brought to us thanks to Motor1.com. This is a quote, the Toyota GR86 is outselling it, the Super BRZ for a, by a lot, and there's a reason. Granted, right off the top of head, my head, and again, not a paid endorsement, just a fan of the brand, I mean, Especially in Texas, with Toyota, again, awesome Texas-based company, it's all those instances where if you buy a GR edition of the vehicle, when it comes to the performance cars like the Corolla GR, you have the Subaru BR, oh, yeah, again, this, not, you know, not Subaru one, but you actually have the Toyota 86, which, again, is the same as a Subaru, but also the Supra GR, you actually get a free track experience. You actually get an instructor to go in you with the car, you go to the track, you actually learn how to drive it as the engineers intend, which is an awesome, unique experience that fewer and fewer automotive companies are offering these days. So right off the bat, that's what, we, and I think it's a one-year membership to NASA, not the uh, not the rocket company, but the actual racing organization, which, yeah, I might be a little biased. I think they're awesome. That's usually the one I go with. Now, in terms of statistics, they say that, quote, this is, again, an article by Adrian Padiano, saying, quote, the GR86 and the Super BRZ might be caught from the same cloth, but their sales don't reflect that. With the second quarter of the year over, we can now take a closer look at the attainable sports cars, how they fared in the first half of 2024. Through June 7th, wow, or sorry, sorry, through June, 7,467 people bought a GR86 in the United States compared to the BRZ, which came in at 1,414 sales. G the GR86 outselling the nearly identical BRZ by a ratio of 5 to 1. Subaru spokesperson said, quote, the sales are directly linked to production. We are allotted a certain amount of, of production units for the U.S. market, and we are prioritizing forced production. It should be noted that the Toyota also has a stronger retail network than Subaru in the U.S., which would further expand the gap in sales. It's also, yeah, from a Subaru perspective, it's also exceedingly disappointing. Just because, again, the Subaru used to have the W, you know, WRX STI is an awesome vehicle. Again, stick shift, good old fun in that regard. But the top trim level for the BRZ is nothing. They have one. They have an STI edition, but it's nothing more than a glorified couple of little pieces of plastic and trim, and then one or two, maybe a couple of sway bars, a little suspension upgrade, but there's no more power, as some might say. And yet, that's what the STI platform is known for. So, again, Subaru, you're getting even less when it comes to actually increasing. Again, the price point goes up a lot for the top trim level. Now, they say Toyota is happy to report that GR6 demand is up 41.9% this year, whereas Subaru says its car is down 43.7%. Last month, 1,500 people bought the GR86, while only 243 purchased a BRZ. And yeah, you literally just pop the hood on them, and you'll see it's a Subaru engine in there. Which, yeah, again, there are, and again, there are a lot more Toyota dealers. Toyota is also the largest main, oh, largest global automotive manufacturer on the planet, and you know, increased dealership capabilities. But I think also the brand of Subaru has just been deteriorating over time. Again, they used to be iconic. They used to make some awesome vehicles. And these days, they're making more and more, I mean, just less exciting. Don't get me started on them killing the, the top of the line trim level with a stick shift. That was obviously heartbreaking to say the least. But I'm not too surprised because, again, again, with Toyota, you get, again, you get that cool track experience. And I'm not sure if that's only in Texas. I'd have to double check on that. But what's a compelling reason? I, I mean, I actually thought the BRZ had a couple extra cool little pieces of plastic throughout the years that may have looked a little bit better. Then I say a little bit better, that was when you had the Scion FRS, which again, Toyota owned Scion, they killed that brand. They that's where you had the it's now the Toyota 86, instead of the Scion FRS. Back when it was just a Scion FRS versus the BRZ, I thought the BRZ actually did have some extra cool pieces of plastic thrown on there. To me, aesthetically it looked a little bit cooler, but I mean, aside from that, it literally is identical. And what would you rather have? Yeah. 
I'm actually surprised. We'll see how long they actually keep this production. It's nice to see some fun little economic sports cars being manufactured these days as more and more automobile companies acquiesce to making SUVs and crossovers and usually all of them painted as silver or white. But nevertheless, it's nice to see a couple of affordable sports cars out there. Hopefully I'll, maybe I'll get one one of these days. It'll be interesting. Let me know. If you had a choice between, you know, Toyota 86 versus the Super BRZ, which one do you choose and what is your logic behind that choice? Let me know in the comments. As always, it'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say. Now, going over to the Culture Prod Podcast, you have Ben and Jerry's progress commercial sparking controversy as Ben and Jerry, well, that's usually what they do for a living, in addition to giving people diabetes. Well, I'm only kidding. Allegedly, might be a byproduct of having their ice cream that has more sugar than maybe a bag of sugar in and of itself. Granted, I'm not, obviously, I'm not their core, core target audience. I'm also, you know, an adult male. I don't eat things like sugary ice cream because I'm not a child. But nevertheless, this comes to us thanks to End Wokeness. Again, Ben and Jerry's, and they really came to fame, was it last 4th of July, when they talked about how the United States was evil because you had land that it was on stolen land. And the most hilarious thing was someone, um, a Native American researcher, found that one of the Ben and Jerry's factories was actually, in fact, on some Native American tribe's land. And the best Rick Roll of all time, or troll, whatever you want to call it, the Native American tribe actually reached out to Ben and Jerry and said, hey, you're actually on our land. Will you give it back? Will you give it back to us? And of course, Ben and Jerry's like all hypocrites. They said no. And spoiler alert, pretty much every land since the dawn dime has been stolen. So that argument is a little moot. Nevertheless, and Wokeness says, quote, Ben and Jerry's just released this new ad, and it's the most woke thing I've ever seen. Looks like the animation is eh, kind of cartoonish. It says, Ben and Jerry's presents progress comes in many flavors, which... Thankfully, it's only 30 seconds, so it shouldn't hurt your ear balls too much. But we'll go ahead and I'll play that here. You can make progress by doing the... What the heck is this? All right, the first, first image is a, a diversity gal with a t-shirt that says, Pecan Resist. But I, I won't say F minus for marketing, but at least have pictures of the, like, I'm guessing because that's the flavor is pecan or pecan, whatever you pronounce. That's above my pay grade, to be frank. From time to time, I do buy almonds for my uh, protein smoothies stuff in there, but... A topic for another time. She has a t shirt that says P can resist. All right, it's by doing the things you then you have a and yeah, this is a video from Ben and Jerry's that we and they have a picture of a bunch of people who are naked riding bicycles in a public road, which is disgusting, obviously. Thankfully, for the commercial, they did put some little clouds over their private parts. Gosh, it's painful. It's only four seconds in. Ooh. If you can farm, all right, you can farm. And yet, this gentleman, at least he has a cowboy hat on and a beard, doing something right, and maybe cowboy boots, hard to see. His, so it's about farming, and yet his t-shirt says, City Weeds, which, again, I'm no farming expert, but I'm pretty sure you do not want weeds in your farm. Quite the antithesis, you want to get rid of them. So, not off to a good start. Fight food deserts. Fight food deserts? What? That's, that's ironically... Oh. Ironically, that's a problem that communities create, they themselves create. I mean, they literally, these businesses lo leave because they're losing money. Walmart, I'm actually surprised. They allowed themselves to lose money for 17 years in Southside Chicago. 17 years. Every year they lost money. Now, only recently did they come to their senses and say, oh dear God, we can't afford to, to take a loss for this long. So they close the stores. Again, it's, a, it's all about culture. If your local community has high propensity and there's high uh, theft rate, Businesses will leave. But, okay, but they say you need to fight food deserts. Well, again, if you really want to do that, just talk to your local community. Again, you have some bad actors say, hey, police officers, why don't you actually arrest these people and put them in jail? Bobby down the street or whoever, he's stolen from the store, food store, or stolen from the Walmart, you know, six times, why don't we actually put him in jail? But I was, I was about to say I partially digress, but I'd probably interject a couple more times, let's be honest. Let's see here. If you can surf, surf for racial justice. Like to read? Start a banned book club. So I have a kid putting a book in like the shared book repository thing you see in front of house, and it says the little banned books, and of course it's a rainbow. Protest with an ice cream cone or project new meat. Protest with an ice cream cone? Now, oh, surely they are advocating violence in terms of throwing the ice cream. That could actually be a big crime, a crime of taste buds, because if that ice cream cone were to hit someone in the face, which again, that could be detrimental to their facial structure, some of that terrible ice cream might actually get in their lips. The amount of sugar from like one, just a couple of drops may cause diabetes. Obviously, I'm partially kidding. But now they have a picture of everyone protesting. It says, it's a picture of the world, or it's a globe, in the shape of an ice cream cone. And it's melting. It says, if it's melted, it's ruined. Hilariously, the people who promulgate that the most 
also by beachfront property. Well, name the politicians and advocates. Always do. Almost done. Almost halfway, actually. Protest with an ice cream cone or project new meaning on an outdated statue. So now you have, well, interestingly enough, the statue's not torn down, which is what they're famous for in terms of destroying history. And it's a picture of statues of, the, I believe, the Civil War era where you have the man on horseback on top of the type of uh, a base. And then they rename the statue, the horse has BLM uh, painted on it. The woman says, no America without black America. The other one has the Marxist uh, fist pump or, you know, maybe some music festival. No, oh, it's the Marxist thing. And then you have a gentleman in the middle. Oh, um, maybe I'm okay. Get in a co what the heck? costume. Let's get in a costume. They're all dressed up as cows. What? But try not to get arrested. And they have a polar bear, polar bear getting arrested, which is also hilarious if you know anything about animals. Polar bears are one of the most violent creatures on the planet. If you try to pet one, it would kill you like that. But I blame Coca-Cola for brainwashing Americans to thinking, oh yeah, you know, the polar bears are cute and cuddly. Oh no, dear God, no, no, no. Watch any any documentary. They are fierce, evil creatures. Make no mistake. They will not offer you, in fact, offer you a glass bottle of Coca-Cola. If anything, they would use that glass bottle of Coca-Cola as a blunt instrument to beat you to death and then subsequently eat you. That'd be a more accurate commercial. I don't know how many bottles of Coke you would sell, but that would be more accurate Christmas commercials. You have the tools for doing good. And oh, this is painful. So now you have, what is this? I don't know what word this is. Perhaps some of the comments could, or I mean, I need to check. Oh, instead of an urban dictionary, we need like a political dictionary, like a leftist dictionary. Because she's holding up a blanket or a really crappy bandana. It says, trust, it says, trust black woman is W-O-M-X-N. Not, I'm not even trying to be negative. I'm, I'm perplexed by what Wemixed is. Also, I bet this person can't define what a woman is, but partially digress. Seven seconds left, folks. And the greatest tool is your own unique flavor. What? Now you have people scuba diving in cow outfits at the bottom of some type of, I don't know if it's just, oh, the ocean, or and they're holding a sign that says, Scoop ice cream, not the reef. Hashtag fight for the reef. What? Okay. Ben and Jerry's. Make some mother chunk and change. At least the last part was an interesting word pun. That's, I mean, I'm not sure how child appropriate it is. Granted, I'm pretty sure most of the people I sell ice cream to are, I think, a white women aged between 25 and 75 on average. If I were to look at the demographics of who Ben and Jerry sells to, Again, this commercial will do gangbusters with those ladies. They will love it. They will, pun intended, eat it up, to say the least, and buy many, 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 many pints of ice cream. So this game roasted online. However, I mean, given Ben Jerry's historical background of who they appeal to and the target audience, it's probably doing, probably increase their sales. Probably. Now, again, it got uh, 859,000 views and 5.5 thousand likes on X Twitter. One of the first comments comes from Gunther Eagleman saying, quote, this is the gayest ad I've ever seen, getting 424 likes. I don't know, Gother, did you watch ads during June? There, I don't, I don't think this was at all. It, it was out there, don't get me wrong, but not the gay. So maybe you need to add a fact check to that. But nevertheless, you have, let's see, Paul Zupa saying, investigate every employee of Ben & Jerry's, getting 83 likes. Vince Legman says, my God, how many pedos, or sorry, pedos do you think work in that company? Getting 1.2 thousand likes. See here, scrolling down more and more. Jack Tron says, Ben & Jerry's is owned by Unilever, which owns Dove, Magnum, and Ornato. This company hates you. Stop buying the products, unquote. Gained 434 likes. I thought they spun that off a couple, a year or so ago. Though the most hilarious th conspiracy theory, or perhaps we'll find out if it's true in the, in the future. I mean, you have, you have Unilever, which go to their website. They own a lot of companies and businesses. And my theory was, they wanted these ladies to eat a bunch of ice cream. And again, the Dove, you know, the same Dove ice cream. And in all the soap commercials, they always have these commercials pretending big, obese, unhealthy women are beautiful. They lie. But they have all these commercials glorifying these unhealthy eating habits. Now, my theory was, the bigger you can pump up your customer base by having them eat all the ice cream, the more soap you can sell because there's so much extra surface area that you need to clean. So that was my theory of why this business owned both of those. And hilariously hypocritical when they talk about empowering women with Dove, the same company owns Axe Body Spray, which historically treated women like objects, and in terms of false advertising, they had those commercials when I was in high school. 
where if you spray the little Axe Body Spray can, all the women in the world will just magically all gravitate towards you. And I'll never forget, I was in a, what was it, Walgreens or CVS? There's a moderately cute gal down the aisle for me. And I looked at her. She looked at me. I went to pick up the Axe Body Spray can. I sprayed it on myself. It's a little spritz. I looked at her, and she just walked away. She did not, in fact, just come at me magically. Might be a little irate over that false advertising. But, nevertheless, the same company says, you know, it's just hilarious the hypocrisy there. Now, scrolling down to more comments, you have Joshua Walker saying, why haven't they relinquished their stolen land? And it's an article from Zachary Rogers called The National Desk from Friday, was it July 2023? It says, Indigenous tribe wants Ben and Jerry's to return stolen land their headquarters is built on. They got 1,000 likes, which they should. Because again, Ben and Jerry's, they don't put a gun to their head. Or Mar I was about to say Mars bar. A dove, uh, dove ice cream bar to their head. They made a commercial last year, around the 4th of July, saying how evil, you know, we stolen land. And yet they themselves, like every human on the planet, is on stolen land because that's land inevitably is. It's thrown down, you have Wall Street Silver saying, we have specifically avoided Ben and Jerry's for many years now because of their radical leftist ideology, unquote, getting 739 likes, which, again, there's a huge audience for that. I don't think it's the, I don't think it's the majority of the market. AKA says, why would anyone eat that ice cream at this point, getting 616 likes? Jeez. Uh, Mr. Bigglesworth memes says, not in July. It has an American flag um, colored stick figure kicking a rainbow stick figure. Says it's finally July, getting 195 likes. Rick Suit says, everything woke, or it's a quote, says, everything woke turns to shit. Says, President Donald Trump gave 420 likes. The Patriot Oasis says, goodbye to Ben and Jerry's, go woke, you go broke, unquote, getting 200, or sorry, 129 likes. Which, again, I don't think they will. Ben and Jerry's. Oh, well, they have high profit margins, which helps their business, of course, so they don't need a high, necessarily a high volume of sales, because again, it's higher profit margin. But again, think about who buys Ben and Jerry's. Do you know? Actually, that'd be a good question for the comments. Have you ever met a man who's bought Ben and Jerry's? I'll make a caveat, and he wasn't buying it for his wife. I've been in the grocery stores. Well, shoot. I mean, in my lifetime, I mean, hundreds of thousands, not hundreds of thousands, hundreds or thousands of times. I never once. Felt an inclining to buy get a thing of Ben and Jerry's. I've seen it in the in the in the freezer section. I walk past it when I'm looking at the organic beef, but I never once actually bought it. But again, there are a lot of people who do buy it. Woke Archive says I just wanted ice cream, getting 239 likes. Which yeah, there was a time when businesses just focused on their core competencies, like making ice cream, and yet, I mean Ben and Jerry's, they're building a brand around activism. And there will be people who buy their ice cream just based on that. Or also not buy their ice cream just based on that, which is the risk of what happens when you get businesses into political and cultural topics. Let's see, Red Wave Press says they really put naked adults in a commercial. Boycott Ben & Jerry's, this is the most woke ad I've ever seen. Getting 243 likes. Dear. Any contrarian statements? Let's see, Base Electrician says, if you can surf, surf for racial justice. Is a man holding a surfboard that says, well, I guess, and it, I'm surprised they don't have custom surfboards yet with the messaging. He just used rudimentary duct tape, which duct tape is a very versatile product. He'll darn, do darn near everything in life. And he does have the letters BLM, getting 36 likes, which, yeah, I still need to watch Candace Owens in a documentary on exposing the lies of BLM in terms of these companies gave millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. Which neighborhoods were actually made better? Oh, yes, the Marxist leader literally bought herself multiple mansions. And the organization was founded by Marxists who were proud about destroying the nuclear family. Which, if you want to help the black community, or any community, you actually need to have a nuclear family. This is the best way, number one, one of the top ways to keep people out of poverty is having a good home life. But I partially digress. Let's see. Booker9 says, have not bought any of their products in years precisely because of this. Game 40 likes. Florida No One says, why would they do a commercial that drives away 50% of their customers? Game 52 likes. One different bean says, naked bike parades, furries, and racism are progress. Yeah, no, just no, getting 66 likes. The going to be top comments. <laughs> Someone had the Homer Simpson uh, meme of him putting bleach in the eye. That Brandon says, needed more of a trigger warning. Got 12 likes. The but yeah, in terms of Ben and Jerry's... I actually don't think they'll decrease their sales too much. I mean, this is kind of the same part of the core commercial they've done for several years. 
and granted, it probably is increasing their sales, especially in places like San Francisco. But in terms of middle America, the majority of the market of prospective ice cream buyers, well, not only are there better things like you could get, like Blue Bell or, or you know, other brands, but yeah, I just can't help but think the majority of people are attracted to this messaging. It might change in the future. It might be a more profitable, you know, messaging to have, but I can't but think Ben and Jerry's, that, yeah, not so great. And yet another reason for most people, or many people, not to buy their product. Now, going over to the political part of podcast, you have the Biden Harris commercial where they quote unquote forgive $167 billion in student loans, and Kamala Harris gets ratioed on social media. Now, this comes directly from the donkey's mouth. Kamala Harris says, quote, President Biden and I have canceled $167 billion in student loan debt for nearly 5 million people, and we're not stopping there. We will continue to work to build an economy that works for every American. Learn more at economicopportunity.gov. Now, they say work for every American, not plumbers and electricians and, you know, folks who, you know, didn't take out student loans. They, they have to pay for that. And, again, this is a video she chose to put out. Yeah, it's about a minute 25. We'll hear what they have to say. Every month I'm hearing about this student loan debt being yeah. forgiven yeah. by the administration. And how much at this point, how much debt has been forgiven and how many people are benefiting from it? So, Michael, it's a big issue affecting so many people. We have forgiven now over $160 billion wow. in student loan debt, right. which has impacted about 5 million people. We are doubling, essentially, the amount of forgiveness if somebody is in public service. So a firefighter, a nurse, a teacher, because God knows we don't pay them enough as it is. Exactly. False. Biggest lie of our lifetime. is based on local tax revenue percentages. So, yeah. Some places are getting a lot, like Beverly Hills, police, firefighters. Yeah, some of them are a lot. Teachers, they make a lot, and they only work yeah, a few months. Also, I keep forgetting, I don't know why I feel so, I need to promulgate this so much, I think not enough people realize, ACT scores are at a 32-year low. Public schools are so inefficient, it's disgusting. Now, granted, there's many variables that go into test scores, I know, but yeah, let's just say, if anything, I think they're overpaid. And the teachers' unions... They are one of the biggest con political contributors as well. Spoiler alert, they vote for a bigger and more bloated government. And so that's that. But the other thing that's really important to get the word out, even if you didn't graduate, you're eligible for student loan debt forgiveness. There are many people who have dropped out simply because they can't afford tuition anymore. Mm -hmm. And they know that the, the loans are just stacking up and they can't afford it and they need to go out and get a job instead of being in school. Mm -hmm. But they still owe that student loan so we have made the policy so that it's just fair. Which it's fair for you and other people to pay off their student loans. I have to pay off their student loans, apparently. Really? Just even if you did not graduate, you are entitled to student loan uh, debt forgiveness. And so please do apply, even if you didn't graduate. You heard it from the vice president herself. I think it's... Uh... It's incredible what the administration is doing. And not to be, not to add insult to injury, this quote unquote gentleman is wearing a rudimentary button up long sleeve. Which again, even if you don't respect the VP of all the occasions of your life, won't you at least suit up? But of course not. Just a rudimentary, at least like it is better than a polo, but still. Like, really? Is this just to try to be more relatable to the youth? Maybe? I don't know. Now, again, got 883,000 views, but only 8,000 likes, which in terms of like ratio is terrible to say the least. Not to brag, but I did get four likes on a video last week. Right, as the youth might say, I went viral, getting like hundreds of views on that one video, I think. But, I mean, going back to this ratio, that's ridiculous. Only 8,000 people like it. And again, I always tell people, if you have college loans, you should still live as a college student. There's a reason I still drive a Honda and not something a little bit more fun and entertaining. Because I'm still, I'm doing my part to pay off the loans that I took out. In fact, we can also have a whole debate on the public schools brainwashing kids to think the only way you'd be successful in life is with going to, you know, getting student loans and going to college. That's ridiculous in and of itself, of course. Now, one of the first comments comes from Paul Zupa saying, quote, There's no such thing as canceling student loan debt. Joe Biden is just making hardworking Americans pay for deadbeats. Notice already ruled this is unconstitutional. Biden is trying to buy illegally buy votes. Disgraceful. That got 1.5 thousand likes, which, true, the Supreme Court has ruled it unconstitutional, and yet, Biden's just going to do, do whatever he wants. Without any consequence, of course. 
just like when they forced landlords not to charge anything during the pandemic. Biden literally said, which can't say in the quiet part out loud, he said to the news, oh yeah, I know it's unconstitutional, but I'm just going to do it. And we'll hammer down in the courts and they'll just lose money. Ricky Rule says, Madam, you cancel nothing. You assign that debt to taxpayers and the unborn. Getting 1.3 thousand likes. Lewent says, you canceled $167 billion in student loan after SCOTUS said no, just to buy votes. Remember that? And you see hashtags Biden and Kamala getting 133 likes. The in contrary statements. The Rasputin poll says, wonderful, let's get the plumbers and electricians to pay for liberal arts degrees. Getting 289 likes. Which, yeah, if, if banks or private, or I was going to say, if smart, they actually had someone looking out for an ROI, no one would be giving money for a college degree in like gender studies or political sire or, or underwater lesbian basket weaving. It's such a high volume of useless degrees. It is ridiculous. Degrees will never give you an ROI, and I would argue you really don't add anything to your life. Hankin simply says, no, you stole it from taxpayers, getting 338 likes. Thomas Lund says, so the Biden administration is still ignoring the law and defying the Supreme Court. One of the reasons you'll be out on your ass and tried for treason. Got 134 likes. And is a picture, or is this AI? Looks like it. It's a picture of a hardworking electrician handing over cash to a college student. The fact check, this college student actually has a beard and has, I think some might say it looks like the trad man. More accurately, the college student have, you know, bright orange or pink hair and probably some nose rings. Which I have no idea why those are getting more and more popular. It's beyond me. White Beard says you canceled nothing. You simply bought votes by transferring the debt to people with real jobs who are responsible. Socialists have no integrity. Gained 403 likes. Let's see here. There's some statistics, though it's not cited. But Liberty Bell says you have canceled nothing. You have transferred the debt to the 59.9% of Americans who pay taxes. 83% owe no student debt. They paid it off. Never borrowed or chosen non-college path. Forcing them to pay for others' debt is tantamount to enslavement, so you can buy votes. In 139 likes. Let's see here. Any contrary statements? Because again, I know there are people who are desperate for getting some sort of break, because again, the student loans are breaking their backs. A lot of people are desperate to get those loans off. So, I mean, it will have an impact on their life. Well, everyone's life, really, as it transfers to us. Let's see here. And yet, I'm not seeing any positive comments. Oh, this is a nice little uh, Dennis G as a picture or a little screenshot of Biden. Biden tweeted, the Supreme Court blocked me from relieving student debt, but that won't stop me. I've relieved student debt for 5 million Americans. I'm going to keep going. Then Biden also tweeted, no one is above the law. Literally two days later. That's hilarious. They got 56 likes. Let's see. Brendan has a picture of the hot dog eating champion. It says record 75 wieners in 12 minutes. He has a picture of Kamala saying, that's all, hold my beer. King 16 likes, which, I mean, there is some truth to the fact that she did sleep her way to the top. Let's see here. Any contrary statements? And again, this, this isn't like, this isn't a post by someone who's like on the far right on, you know, on the ex-Twitter. This is from the VP's own account on ex-Twitter. Let's see here. Did we finally find one? Okay, we did find one. Although, not really pertinent to the conversation. It is Dr. Eric... Jetmir? Jetmir. That is a weird name. Also, this is as weird as a name like Topping. Oh, wait. I partially digress. But nevertheless, he has a picture of Trump as well as some of his campaign folks, and it has a picture of the word convicted over their heads. They did get five likes. So we found, or is it coherent, but we did find a country in statement. Eric Jetmir. No, I was just posting random memes of, of Trump. Writer, ex Navy. Intel and professional executive producer, CEO of Jitmir Consulting. 10K thousand followers. Interesting. Yeah, he has a little blue wave in his profile as well. So we do have one guy. Let's see here. No, we do. Okay, here, here we go. Here's another contrary statement. Homer Rosenberg, said, who he's got 3,000 subscribers. He says, quote, oh, Great news for student loan borrowers. This is a significant step towards economic fairness and opportunity for all Americans. Granted, he is mentally vacuous. However, he did get eight likes as people agreed with his statement and 32 responses. Was he ratioed? Not by number of likes, but all the comments are negative. One person says, will you pay my mortgage and car payment? Let's see. Bar Tom Bello says, just another debt to be passed on to people who already paid it. 
Brad says, what is fair about me for paying someone else's loan? Precisely. But again, he did get eight likes. So a couple, a couple of positive comments. They weren't, it wasn't as bad as Chris Christie. The Chris Christie effect was in fact not in effect here. A fascinating social media phenomenon. It was twice when Chris Christie was rolling, I mean running for the Republican nominee, where he had zero positive comments in his tweet, which, I mean, statistically speaking, was almost impossible because allegedly Chris Christie had family, friends, and even campaign staff at one point. And yep, when we were covering that, only two, there was two times there was no positive comments. Just statistically, astronomically improbable. But nevertheless, this was not one of those instances, but I think this will be yet another big political topic going into the presidential election, especially when it comes to being inflation is getting worse, people are crushed through cash. Imagine your taxes are going to go up because you're, you have to pay for someone else's loans. I mean, I think Trump should, in terms of moves on the political chessboard, this actually is, you can't say illegal, but it's also beneficial for both sides. People on the left are going to use this very much to run and say, hey, you know you're hurting, vote for us, we'll give you free cash. That will buy votes, guaranteed. Then you have people on the right saying, hey, a lot of your hard work in Americans is really, is it really fair that you're working, you know, 60, 70, 100 hours a week? And you have to pay off, you know, Kelsey's lesbian dance degree or gender studies degree because she didn't make the wrong, right career choice and she took out these loans. So interestingly enough, both sides are going to use this to raise money on the, cam on the campaign. And it'll be interesting to see what's the majority of Americans, what's the reception to this messaging? What's the most compelling, what's going to be the most compelling messages for majority of folks to swing their, their way? I even have, I do have a couple friends who really are in favor of student loan forgiveness. But they're not singular voters. I don't think this will be the one thing that'll get them to vote for that, you know, vote for Biden Harris. But let me know in the comments. Do you think this will be one of the top topics and will it sway some of your votes? Let me know. As always, it'd be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Other interesting political news, you have the Save Act Election Integrity by Michael Johnson on social media going viral, to say the least. Now, comes directly from his ex Twitter profile. It's a little bit lengthy. He does I'll spell it out, but it's one of the most important things, and it is the most viral moment of his career, getting 54.4 million votes, or views. These are, they're going to need a lot more votes to win. Remember, Biden got over 80 million votes when he was running in 2020. The most, I mean, statistically speaking, well, improbable, but nevertheless, that's the most votes ever, because he is more cosmetic, cos, what is it? He's more compelling and charismatic than Biden. People are that inspired by him. I'm only par partially adjusting, of course. Now, Speaker Michael Johnson says, quote, The SAFE Act will safeguard our elections by ensuring only American citizens vote in federal elections. Hear what the legislation does. It requires state election officials to ask citizenship before providing voter registration forms. It requires an individual to provide proof of citizenship in order to register to vote in federal elections. It allows state officials to accept a wide variety of documents that will make it easy for citizens to register to vote in federal elections. It provides states with access to federal agency database so they can remove non-citizens from voter rolls and confirm citizenship for individuals' lack of proof of citizenship. It will also direct DHS to determine whether to conduct removal proceedings if a non-citizen has been identified as having registered for a vote in federal elections. It will also require DHS to notify the state chief election official whenever an individual has been new, uh, natura, naturalized to ensure new citizens are able to exercise their right to vote. And each one of those, I mean, his top comic got 58,000 likes. Each one subsequently got 20, 19, 16, 15, 13,000 apiece in terms of the likes. And one would think this would not be controversial and every American would agree, yeah, it makes sense. We only want Americans voting in the election. We only want citizens voting. However, then it'd be a lot harder for some people to win. So I'm not too surprised there are some contrarian comments. One well, of the first comments comes from Guthrie Eagleman saying, quote, if you would have said that you were doing, sorry, <clears throat> if you did what you said you were going to do, and we'd have a closed border and less need for a safe act. 5,000 illegal aliens cross the border today so far because your lack of spine. Gained 12,000 likes. Which, I mean, even if you, even if they fix the border today, there is still an estimated between 8 and, what is it, 8 and 13 million illegals crossing the past 40 months. So, again, it, that is part of the equation to fix that problem. However, that's not the whole antidote. We do have this alleged human. I say that because who would use that as a profile name? And of course, his profile name, interestingly enough, of course, it does have the Ukrainian flag and the blue wave flag, but it does have the American flag, which is a rare thing to, to see for some folks. Now, it's alleged, and again, he's a radical leftist. However, I do follow him because, again, I want to have more, life gets a little bit boring for an echo chamber and more perspectives, the better. 
Now, this alleged human says, Speaker Johnson, you must truly take us for 100% fools. Your so-called SAVE Act is an utter waste of time, both to read and our tax dollars to write. Your nonsense only undermines confidence in our democratic process to disenfranchise, disenfranchise eligible voters who think they may not be... How much did this guy write? Oh, he wrote like 12 paragraphs. I'll read, I'll read the first one. Let's see here. Congress didn't... This is just a fabricated issue distracting from your problems. Congress has a general problems to address. This Republican-led House obsesses over complicating voting for the underprivileged, shall we? Which, he's the lead. Mostly meant to be vacuous, but he did get 1.2 thousand likes for that. Let's see. Paul Zupa says, the Senate will never approve this. You're a failed Speaker Johnson. You, your only leverage was funding, and you gave Biden a blank check. Came on you, you're part of the problem. Getting 6.4 thousand likes. Heather Faithful says, good, now there's an act... Um, that ban all electronic mail-in voting, right? This is the greatest election. This is the greatest election nation on the planet. Should be leading the re in that regard, not failing. It has a picture showing France banned mail-in voting in 1975 due to fraud. Mexico banned mail-in voting in 1992 due to fraud. Belgium bailed mail-in mail -in voting due to that in 2018 due to fraud. Sweden does not permit mail-in voting. Italy does not permit mail-in voting. Ukraine does not permit mail-in voting. Well, they also don't permit voting at all since Zelensky is emperor for life. He literally said, we might have elections only if America pays for it. They also banned religion in Ukraine. But nevertheless, Russia does not permit mail-in voting. Japan does not permit mail-in voting. No Middle Eastern country permits mail-in voting. No Latin country permits mail-in voting. Got 320 likes. See here. Funky Town says, Speaker Johnson, in red states, illegals are allowed to get a driver's license, automatic ballot. Ballots win an election, not the number of votes. We need to fix the problem. Paper ballots, no voting machines. And then they have a picture that says, why isn't the GOP fighting to get rid of mail-in voting and electronic voting machines? That got 3.7 thousand likes. See. Oh, this is hilariously sad, but true. Zombo says, doesn't matter if it won't get past the Senate. And it's a picture of a cat. And it's a little recycle sign where it goes around the circle. It says, I wake up. Democrats get caught doing some shady shit. And then it says, Republicans are outraged. Nothing happens. And it repeats again and again. I got 3.4 thousand likes, which, I mean, Republicans, yeah, I don't know how many, how many emails they send. They, they, they send a lot of angry letters. They do that much. George says, I'm not reading all that unless you plan to, to attach a law to the next spending bill. It's the only way to pass it. Gain 3.7 thousand likes. Zuby says, I had always assumed that only U.S. citizens could vote in U.S. elections. Weird that hasn't been the case. Gain 3.2 thousand likes. I don't type. Perhaps they have voice to text. That's an interesting name. They say, they say, quote, how about they get arrested on the spot for coming to vote a voting place while being illegal? Okay, 1.2 thousand likes, which, yeah, well, that would probably be something to be smart to do. Woke up says, now add that you have to be a U.S. citizen to be added to the census. Okay, 1.3 thousand likes, which, yeah, you should. That is one of the biggest incentives for illegal immigration. Because, again, they actually, based on the census, your states will get extra house seats and get extra resource allocation. And you don't, I don't know who's mentally vacuous or morally vacuous enough to make it to the point where, oh yeah, any anyone there is counted on census. Thereby giving you a huge incentive for that. That did get 1.3 thousand likes. Let's see. C. Steele says, better hurry. Congress only has a couple more working days. I'm, t I'm retired and work more than you guys. I got 1.2 thousand likes, which probably true. The bar's pretty low for how much how hard they're working in D.C. Left and right, they seem to do very, very little. Especially for helping, you know, folks. Let's see. A lot of people not that, I mean, yeah, a lot of people upset with this guy. Let's see. Detective 51 says, this is so basic. Only those who plan to cheat will object this. Getting 102 likes. Let's see. Danny Green sends legal government issued ID, paper ballots, and pencil fixed. Getting 601 likes. Let's see. Among the wildflowers says, talk is cheap. Getting 299 likes. Barry Collins says, absolutely nothing will come of this. More political theater from the do-nothing GOP. But of course, you will have another $100 billion ready for Ukraine and not a single dollar for the southern border. Getting 443 likes, which, yeah, I'll never, I never want to hear that excuse again in terms of we can't afford a southern border because it might cost 8 to $12 billion when we spent 150 to $200 billion for Ukraine. Yeah. Scroll down more and more. Let's see if there's any country in comments here. Uh, Mr. De or sorry, Mr. Deplorable says this bill should also ban universal mail-in ballots, ban drop boxes, 
Bam Bell Harvesting, getting 684 likes. Let's see. Uh, any more contrary statements? James R says deporting illegals ensures they cannot vote in our elections, getting 96 likes. True. So, yeah, it's one of those things where a lot of people agree with them, but I don't think anyone actually believes Speaker Johnson or the GOP will actually get anything done. I mean, I mean, specific, I mean, historically speaking, they don't have the, they really don't have the greatest track record in doing so. And yeah, that's going to be a big issue. And we're seeing more and more non citizens getting, you know, registrations to vote. So, you know, even more distrust for the upcoming election. It will be interesting to see if people on the left or the right will really agree with the outcome. I just can't help but think, yeah, the odds are probably not great. Other interesting political news, you have a picture of Biden's speechwriting team going viral on social media. Now, this is brought to us thanks to End Wokeness. It says, quote, Biden's speechwriting team, this speaks for itself, no caption needed. And, yeah, spoiler alert, it's uh, liberal white women and a couple diversity guys. So, I mean, it's exactly what you would have thought. It got 2.5 million views. Looks like there's one white guy. Got shoulder-length hair. Although, he did suit up. He did something right. The other, uh, looks like the other gentlemen are suited up. Uh -huh. They have Korean Jean Pierre sitting in the back, probably tweeting for Biden, as she usually does. She probably plays a lot of dodgeball in her spare time, because she's very proficient at dodging reporters' questions as well. Now, they also got 32,000 likes, which is one of the first comments coming from Guthrie Eagleman, saying, quote, this is who is posing for X on Biden, or for X, on X for Biden. I was going to say, if you click that subscribe button, it very well may assist like speaking in aptitudes. When I first started the show, I had no subscribers, and believe it or not, even a worse speaker than I am today. I spoke it even faster, mostly monotone, stumbling over my words left and right, almost as bad as Biden trying to crawl upstairs. But as I've gained more and more subscribers, my speaking articulation has slowly but surely improved. Granted, some might argue it's just a modicum of, a of improvement, but if you click that button, I would greatly appreciate it and feel my theory and improve my speaking skills so that someday I may very well get through an entire episode without a speaking blunder. So if you like, subscribe, and follow it, I'd greatly appreciate it. And it very well might assist. We also have Paul Zupa saying, quote, led by the most embarrassing DEI hire of all time, KGP, a Korean GP here, which, yeah, she got, I got 1.7 thousand likes. Going down more and more. Boom, boom, Jenkins is the only two straight-looking white guys in the room are also the only people actually working DEI in action again. And then you have to zoom. Wow, I didn't see that. So if you zoom in really far in the back, yeah, <laughs> the two guys are really working on laptops while everyone else is taking a picture. I got 2,000 likes. Let's see here. Basic Electrician says, seeing Biden's speech writing team explains everything. End of quote. Repeat the line. Which, yeah, Biden did say that. he He's pretty bad about reading like, the actual stage directions and you know what he's supposed to be doing, not what he's supposed to be saying. So... I can't imagine trying to actually write it for him, because that's a tall order. Let's see. Is any contrary statements here? Joey Mariano says these are the women worried about needing abortions. Pretty sure they'd be fine with just using their faces as contraception. Got one point one thousand likes, which Yeah. I mean Yeah. Yeah. Be pretty effective, yeah. Going down more and more. Let's see. Any kind of strange... Uh, Cynthia Publicis, interesting name, says not a single testicle in the room, gained 1,000 likes. John Denver Parody, of course, says only ones working are the two white guys in back, gained 253 likes. John says, meanwhile, Trump speech writing team, it's just a picture of Trump in the Oval Office, gained 705 likes. Joshua Walker says, this is DEI capsulated in a single photo, getting 522 likes. AKA says, basically what you expect them to look like, getting 510 likes. Eh, I mean, that being said, there's not a single person with pink or blue hair. I, I'm actually shocked you didn't, that we didn't see that in the picture. So, let's see here. AC says, these guys working in the corner are looking for jobs on Indeed, getting 672 likes. The Political Palm says, why is everyone 12, getting 647 likes, which... Yeah, they all look very much young. Trump.ai says, well, that pretty much explains everything. Getting 175 likes. Let's see. 
Renee says, is this Kamala's speech writing team? There's two kids playing with crayon. And 81 likes, which, yeah. I kind of always assumed Kamala's speeches were like chat GDP put into a blender so that all the words are random. I don't think it'd be too far off. Yeah. Yeah. Jason Velasquez says Chucky in his picture, or it's a zoom in picture of Korean Jean Pierre getting 40 likes. So, yeah, it's uh, again about what you expect from the speech writing team. No one's too surprised. And. Oh, someone actually zoomed in. Representative Adam Sheep says this one is posting on X as we speak. They zoom in on one of the girls' laptops, and it's a little bit grainy, but you can tell it's X Twitter. Be hilarious if you actually saw his like Biden's profile because again he's not. I don't think anyone actually legitimately thinks that Biden is you know, posting for himself. I got thirty seven likes, and yeah, I'm not sure how they're. Oh, well, I'm not sure what they're going to do for the rest of the year as they're trying to write speeches. But yeah, maybe they need some uh, a new speech team. Can't hurt at this point. Now, going over to the business blunder of the day, you have Trader Joe's recalling some camels since they, well, suppose a little bit of a safety risk. Now, this is brought to us thanks to CBS, specifically Kate Gibson, who's a writer over there. She's, she says, quote, Trader Joe recalls candles sold nationwide, saying they pose a safety risk. You've got a picture of them. Oh, well, it's fancy. It comes with a, a metal tin, which, yeah, that's no cheap candle. It's not precious metal, but in terms of retail, that's going to be a heck of a lot more than plastic. Or plastique, if you want to feel fancy. Now uh, they say, quote, Trader Joe's is recalling its mango... Ta well, that's way above my pay grade. Mango tangerine scented candles sold nationwide because the popular product may pose a safety risk due to a, quote, larger than expected flame. Which, wow, the U.S. is, wait. Just when I thought the United States has become too litigious or soft, you hear something like this where, oh yeah, the flame is just a little too big. Uh-huh. Say, quote, Part of a rotating lineup of seasonal candles, the recalled product, quote, may have an unexpected burn pattern. The, quote, candle flame can spread from the wick to the wax, starting causing a larger than expected flame, posing a risk. The candles should be thrown away or returned to any Trader Joe's for a refund, the retailer said. Anyone with questions can call Trader Joe's customer relations line, which, again, I'm not sure how much someone's time is worth, but it's got to be pretty sad if your time is worth so little, monetarily speaking. That you actually call to replace a candle. Now, granted, this is a Trader Joe's candle. It'll probably cost 50 bucks now that I think, now that I think about it. But it, nevertheless, if you are scared about a candle burning, you can call Trader Joe's at 626-599-3817. Again, 626-599-3817. Or you could submit a form on the company's website. Now, Trader Joe's did not state how many of the candles were sold nationwide or whether there had been any reports of injuries or fires related to it. A spokesperson said, or spokesman said that the can recalled candles were made in the U.S., but did not give any additional information. Because of the price point, they say that now this is not available on the Trader Joe's site. The 5.7 ounce candles were sold for, okay, there we go, $3.99 the grocery chain store. Huh. And granted, it's, you know, $3 more expensive than I pay for candles, but nevertheless, I'm a guy. They say the recalled candles could be still be found as of Wednesday at a considerable markup on Amazon where one seller was offering the candle as a pair for $22.09. Of course, now it's also been removed from the Amazon website. And yeah, great news. I mean, granted, most of the business funders in terms of retail recalls last year were about Trader Joe's foods being unhealthy or, you know, possibly killing you. Well, more likely just making you, uh, more often than not, just making you sick or ill. But yeah, Trader Joe's, and again, maybe this is just a, Quality assurance that slipped through the cracks or they didn't actually, you know, test these candles properly. Now, granted, I don't, again, not safety or legal advice, but I mean, I wouldn't throw this away if I had an extra candle and just be a little extra careful maybe because it might, again, burn. But again, the fact that Trader Joe's, it sounds like they did the right thing. They're getting ahead of any potential problems. And yeah, it sounds like thankfully it doesn't sound like anyone was too seriously injured. But again, Trader Joe's not having the quality assurance to make sure the candles don't burn too bright or, you know, too hot. Unfortunately, that is certainly the business blunder of the day. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to tune in. Again, trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you could click that button, I'd greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a thumbs up, thumbs down, or comment is a great way to give me some additional feedback, letting me know how I can make the show better and better. Lastly, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe and fight the good fight.